Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas. I'm a maintainer of uh, Torch Vision, along with Philip and Victor, who are engineer uh, at Consight. And I work at Meta. So I will uh, be presenting a little bit um, about what's new in Torch Vision, and in particular about the pre-processing transforms. We have lots of new exciting features uh, about that in the last release. So. It's going to be two part. I'm going to briefly introduce Torch Vision just to set the context, and then we'll talk about the actual new stuff that we released recently. So, Torch Vision is a PyTorch library for computer vision, uh, and we have we provide tools and components for uh, every steps of the model training pipeline for computer vision. So, if you're doing computer vision with PyTorch. There's probably a bunch of stuff in Torch Vision that uh, would be useful to you. We provide, I don't know if, yeah, the mic is okay. We provide a bunch of uh, data sets, um, typically for image classification, but not just, also for uh, image detection, image segmentation, video things. Uh, we have APIs to download them automatically if you need to. Uh, I'm just going to go pretty quick on, on that part. Uh, we have IO operations as well for encoding and decoding images, typically JPEGs and, and PNGs. Uh, PNGs. Um, we have lots of transformation for uh, data augmentation or for training, but also for inference. So I'm not going to talk about that now because this is going to be the main topic of this talk. And we also have like uh, so C++ and CUDA implementation of operators that would, you would typically need in computer vision, but that wouldn't make it in PyTorch core because they're too specific for vision. These would be NMS, RawLine, uh, Deform, Conf 2D, that kind of stuff. And finally, we have a bunch of uh, pre-trained models. Um, again, mostly image classification, but also image detection, segmentation. Uh, we have the vision transformers and all that. And we actually have a way to, we, so we versions the weight that we provide, the pre-trained weights, so that sometimes we retrain these models with new, tra with new training techniques, and this make them more accurate, and we're able to um, provide these different weights, uh, and you can choose which one you want. Okay, that's it for vision. The TLDR of Torch Vision is just like, it's if, if you're doing computer vision with PyTorch, there's probably a lot of stuff that you can use in Solution. So we recently released, um, I mean, we recently released a new release of Torch Vision, okay. But in, in, this, uh, in this new release, there's a lot of exciting features for transforms and data augmentation. So just to set the context, the transforms is whatever happens just before you have decoded your images and just before you pass them into the model. So typically during training, you would want to transform your images, resize them, maybe flip them a little bit, change the colors, uh, erase some part of the images randomly. That's the kind of, this is in scope for the, the, the transformation. And then for inference, you would still need to do at least like some resizing, maybe a normalization. Um, so all of this is possible with, with the transforms that we have. And the main new uh, thing, about this transform now is that they don't just support classification tasks, but they also support detection, segmentation, and video tasks. So I'm going to detail um, what that is in the next slides. So until now, until the previous releases, uh, we've always had these transforms in Torch Vision, but we were only supporting image classification tasks. So you would pass an image as input to these transforms, and you would get an image as output. This could be a batch of images, but it's still, it has to be an image, and it's treated as an image. So you could compose them, you could like randomly flip the image, do some color changes to the image, but again, the main point is that you can only transform images, at least that was the case until now. But when you're doing detection or segmentation, you need to transform objects that are not images. You need to transform bounding boxes, for example, or masks. And this was not possible, but now it is. And these new transforms who support detection, segmentation, they are available in the V2 namespace of uh, Torch Vision then transforms. They are 100% backward compatible with the one that already exists. So you just have to change the import at the top of your file and everything will work exactly the same. It will work 
faster, actually. We're going to detail that. But everything that used to work before still works the same. We just support more things now. And you can see here, let, so previously, just look at the last line, number six. I was passing an image. Now I can pass an image and bonding boxes. And these bonding boxes get transformed accordingly as well, uh, respecting the image geometry and everything. So I could be passing, he, here I'm passing a tuple of image and bonding box. I actually don't have to pass a tuple. I can pass any kind of structure that I want. Because the new, these new transforms, they don't care what you pass them. They will just respect the structure of the input. So for example, line six, I'm passing an image. I get an image as output. This is just like before. On line number nine, I'm passing a tuple of three things and I'm getting exactly the same structure, but I can do more complex stuff with like nested structures. For example, here at the last line, I'm passing a tuple, and one of them is a dictionary target with a bunch of embedded stuff in it, and I'm getting exactly the same structure as, in, as output. And so typically here, line number uh, 16, uh, we have a key, and, and the value for that key is a string. The, the, the transforms don't know how to transform that, so they just ignore it and they pass it through. It's going to return the same thing. And this is typically useful, for example, if you have uh, if you have a problem in your training pipeline, there's are some image that you can't decode or transform or things like that. You can just pass the path of these images as well. You bundle them with the samples that you pass. And then on, on an error, you can actually just print the path of the image to actually figure out what was wrong with it. Um, and this arbitrary structure input, how we call it, is very useful as well to integrate with other kind of data sets. So these transforms, they integrate seamlessly with the Torch Vision data sets. But if you're using other data sets out there that use some weird nested structure or whatever, this will still work pretty much out of the box with those. Um, so I guess like the main question that you might have is how do the transform actually understand that they need to transform those boxes and mask the way they should. So it works through uh, the way the, the way the transform know how to transform these things is because they look at the type of these objects. So the boxes here that you see, they would have to be of the bonding boxes tensor subtype, and the mask as well would have to be of a mask subtype. So we have introduced new tensor subclasses in Torch Vision. They are very thin wrappers around the, the normal tensor subclass. So everything that works with a tensor work with those things. You can sum them, slice them, do whatever you want. Um, and some of them have some metadata attached to them, typically the bounding boxes. We, we need to attach the size of the image that they refer to for them to be transformed properly. Um, so we have we have subtypes for images as well, but you can still just use pure tensors because this is what used to work before, and it still works the same. And we also support we yeah we still support pale images. By the way, it does the images don't have to be tensors; they can just be pale images. But at this point, we still recommend to use uh, tensors instead of pale images because you can actually um, expect some some speed ups. So. If you're familiar with the transforms that we have in Torvision, you may know that we expose these transforms as classes and also as functionals. This is exactly the same as the Torch NN module. Uh, you have the classes who are stateful. This is where we can handle things like randomness and things like that. And then you have the functionals who are just like, well, stateless and, and purely functional. Um, so there's almost a one-to-one -one mapping between these two, these two namespaces, but you would typically use one or the other, depending on your use case. And we have a third level of abstraction, which is even lower down the stack, which are the kernels. Um, these are typically useful if you're using TorchScript or maybe Torch.compile. Uh, but yeah, I'll, maybe I'll talk about Torch.compile a little bit later. Actually, I'll talk about it now. Um, basically, right now, at this stage, it mostly works with the kernels. It doesn't work too well with the functional and the classes, but we're, this is actually stuff that we're working on. So if we need to, uh, if you need to touch compile the Torch Vision transforms right now, use the kernels. But what I'm saying right now might be irrelevant two weeks from now because this is an active uh, area of work. Um, okay, so 
the new transforms, they're great if you want to do a detection and uh, segmentation tasks. But even if you still care about just classification or just about transforming single images without anything other than that, we still recommend you to try and use them because there you should be able to expect uh, some speed ups. We have completely rewrote the impl their implementation, even for pure images. And in particular, we have rewrote the resize transforms, uh, which used to be the bottleneck of typical small classification pipelines. So they're not able to handle U in 8 D type instead of just float. And, and it makes them much, much faster. So g give it a try. We actually have a bunch of um, performance guidelines in our documentation, so you can also refer to those. And speaking of preprocessing, this is outside of the transform space, but just before that is the decoding. And now we uh, build against libjpeg turbo instead of libjpeg, so you can expect some speed ups on the decoding as well. So these, these transforms, they have extension point. You can extend them in mainly two ways. The first way is, of course, if you have a custom transform that you want to write, you, can, you still can do that. It's very easy. These are, these are just nn.modules, so you can just write your forward pass and transform whatever input you want, output them, and then that's it. You have a transform, and you can plug it into a transform pipeline, just like any, um, like any nn.module, really. And then maybe I should stay here. And then we have, you can also create your own tensor subclasses. So as I described, we have tensor subclasses built in for bounding boxes, masks, videos, and images. But maybe you want to transform something else. For example, you're doing key point detection, and you need to be able to transform the key point alongside of the images as well. This might be something that we'll implement eventually in television or not. I can't give you any promise on that. But if you need it now, you can already define your own key point class and basically tell Torch Vision how it should be transforming your own custom subclass. So the main line, the, the important line here is line number eight, where you basically it says for the key point class, here is how you should be transforming, uh, here is the implementation of the horizontal flip transform. And then you can use uh, you can use the built-in Torch Vision transform, so random horizontal flip like that. The transform is going to look at the object and see, oh, this is a key point class. I know how to transform that for this particular transform, and it's going to call this um, in like, a, like any other uh, tensor object that it knows how to transform. Uh, that's pretty much it. We have a lot of doc. We have completely rewritten our documentation, so feel free to check them out. There's Everything you need to know about these transforms is, is probably somewhere um, in the doc. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. This is the TLDR, is just use the V2 transform. Thank you.